What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. I'm your favorite self-aware narcissist, Mr. Lee Hammock, better known as Mental Illness across all social media platforms. If this is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice. I'm a diagnosed narcissist, and I use my platform on social media to raise awareness for NPD, get more people into therapy, like myself, five years wrong, and in the process of doing all of that, validate the victims, survivors, and the thrivers of said disorder. Today's episode is going to be about why do narcissists talk to people who ever avoid therapy? I know, so I can give a personal statement on this because like I said, I've been in therapy for five years, y'all. It's been five years and I have the rest of my life to go. I know so many people want to get their partner. Y'all see my journey, you see where I'm at right now. You want to get your partner into therapy and you love because you love them so much, you care about them so much. But I tell the, I, I, I keep having to break this to people. A lot of narcissistic people are going to avoid therapy. And one of the main reasons why is because therapy requires a certain level of vulnerability that a lot of narcissistic people are not going to be willing to get to. Therapy, pretty much, when you go to therapy, it's pretty much like a stranger that you might meet on the internet. <laughs> a stranger that you meet on the internet. You have to sit in front of them. And it's like they put a big mirror in front of you. Like really, a big life-size mirror in front of you and make you look at yourself. They make you look at yourself. You, it's not just looking at yourself from the external point of view. It's like a mirror that looks that looks at you that looks at you that makes you look at yourself internally as well. It's like a mirror that's like is it, you can you can see through yourself. You can see every piece of yourself. You can see like when you look into this mirror that this therapist is holding up, you don't only you not only see this version of yourself right now, you see the version of yourself who you thought you were supposed to be. You see the version of yourself that you think the world sees. You see the young version of yourself that might have been traumatized or might have been through some type of trauma and external experiences that shut you down and made you narcissistic. They made you toxic. That's why I think a lot of people get it twisted and just make it seem like, oh, the narcissist, nar most narcissists don't think there's a problem wrong with them. Nar uh, like, yeah, most of the narcissists that I talk to, that I've experienced with, especially in the, a lot of these self-aware narcissist groups that I'm part of, they knew that they, there was something going on. They knew there was something going on. A lot of times they come into those groups, there's like cries for help. And these are diagnosed narcissists in these groups. Most of them are diagnosed narcissists. They, they come in there with a cry for help. You know what I mean? Just like, I, my life is over. I don't know what to do. And people are just like, have you tried therapy? No, no, no. Therapy is not an option. People are like, yo, therapy, is, a lot of people run from therapy because it does require a level of vulnerability. And it requires a level of, you know, just taking off the, the, the mask that we've created throughout our lives. It requires that to happen as well. Not many, not many people want, you know, want you to see behind the mask. You know what I mean? Because therapy makes us question who we really are. Therapy, when you sit down in that therapist chair, especially for me, with me, it, I, it, that, mi that big mirror that I said they put in front of you, it's like it exposes everything. You see all your imperfections. You see all your insecurities. This is not, the, there's no filter. You know how on Snapchat and YouTube and, well, not YouTube, Snapchat and TikTok and Instagram, you can put filters on your picture. You can filter your life. In therapy, there's no filter. If you want to get, if you want to work on yourself, you can't filter your life. You can't filter your, filter your experiences and things like that. You go to therapy and it's like you, everything is exposed. Like literally everything, everything is exposed. All your imperfections, all your insecurities are right there on display. And you're supposed to tell this to a stranger. You're supposed to expose these insecurities and talk about the root cause of these insecurities. Talk about the bad stuff that you might not have, that might have happened to you in childhood, the neglect that you might have experienced in childhood, how you really, how you really might internally hate your father, even though that you saw him every single day, how you might internally hate your mom because you, she picked a bad person to be your father. You mean that stuff happens, y'all. It absolutely does happen. You know what I mean? Mindset wise, strength wise, I mean, mindset wise and all that type of stuff. It does happen to a lot of people. So that's why a lot of narcissistic people avoid therapy because therapy is the, the admission that something is going on. And a lot of people don't want to. They know they out. They knew I knew that something was going on with me. A lot of people know that there's something going on with them. But therapy going to therapy is like the admitting that. And as soon as you admit that you expose yourself for the world. That's why that's why I come on here on my platform and expose myself in front of millions of people, potentially millions of people every single day. 
not just on YouTube. I know y'all see my YouTube. I know y'all put y'all push pause and go to my YouTube channel, and you look out there, and you're just like, "Well, Lee, you only have two hundred forty-two thousand, so you're not exposing yourself to millions. <laughs> you're, you're mistaken, Lee. There's there's those delusions. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but seriously, but my my platform across all social media. You know what I mean? I have 242K on YouTube, but I have 1.6 million people that follow me on TikTok. Another 171,000 on, on Instagram, uh, 191,000 on Facebook. So you add all those up, there's over 2 million people. So yes, millions, plural, of people that follow me across all platforms I'm exposing myself to. And y'all be, y'all be surprised how much stuff I get. Like People are just like, why don't more narcissists go to therapy? Yeah, I get attacked by literally therapists every day on my social media platforms. I yesterday I had to deal with some some wild therapist in, on, in their comment, just making videos about me, just unpro, un, unprovoked videos about me. I was just like, this is another reason why people don't go to therapy. Why would they? Why would you? Why would a narcissistic person or a person with mental health issues go to therapy and you know, want to try to get better when you expose? If you expose yourself, you got weirdos on the internet that will come at you. Just un, unprovoked personal attacks. Just like what the you know why what. And those are therapists, y'all. But it's all good. You know what I mean? I, I feel like there's a lot of envy and jealousy coming from some therapists out there as well towards my platform. Even though there's some great therapists that recommend me and things like that that, deal, that that I work with personally. You mean, that I appreciate. Some therapists out there just don't. They, they, I. It's just a different world, y'all. But yeah, a lot of narcissistic people, like including my, like, it doesn't make me, it doesn't make me want to stop. I just let, let y'all know, it doesn't make, it makes me want to go harder because I know I irritate people like that. I irritate people who see my growth and my platform based on my mental health and things like that, based on me talking about what the things I've done, things I'm going to do now, you know. So I want to be a beacon of light for a lot of narcissistic people to go to therapy. And I know how, I know what I need to do to get there. I'm going to rub people the wrong way, but it's all good. You know, I'm going to rub some people the wrong way, some people. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. That's not rubbing people the wrong way or rubbing people the right way. Sounds weird. I'm just trying. To, I'm just trying to. Uh, <laughs> just trying to inspire people. Seriously. But again, back to the topic at hand, y'all. Sorry for that tangent. But yeah, that big mirror that sits in front of you in that therapist chair. You have to. You have to like. You know, a lot of narcissists will go sit in therapy or talk to people. Will go sit in therapy and just look down and not want to look in that mirror. And the mirror is talking to you. The mirror is like, you look at that mirror, you might see the young virgin of yourself that got hurt. The young virgin of yourself that got traumatized. Nobody wants, a lot, a lot of people don't want to deal with that, y'all. Because they're looking in that mirror. This is, this is one of the type of mirrors, like when you find, like me personally, when you look in that mirror and you're willing to look into that mirror, you see the young virgin of yourself that you couldn't protect. You want to reach out there and hug the young version of yourself. It's just, it's, therapy is empowering for me. Was it, is it tough? Yeah, it's still tough to this day. To this day. To this day. Shout out to uh, Deontay Wilder. Um, therapy is tough for just me to this day. Like, I got to go back to therapy next, like another appointment next week. <sighs> I'm nervous about, but again, y'all, this is how we do it. That's why a lot of narcissistic and toxic people do not go to therapy because that mirror, that big mirror, that reflective mirror that shows every insecurity, every imperfection, everything that goes wrong with that, nar- that, that, that narcissist thinks is wrong with themselves, the mirror shows it back. That, that therapy mirror shows it back. And then also the threat of exposure and people knowing, did you go to therapy? People knowing that you go to therapy and the pot- potentially they can use that against you and stuff like that. But, you know, if I'm showing people that like you can, they can use it against you, but they can't stop you. You know what I mean? But anyway, y'all, let me hop out of this thing. Um, no, keeping it short and sweet today. It's Sunday. I got to get, get in and out the office. Um, Toronto, Canada is coming up on November the 19th. Toronto, I'll see you in Toronto, Canada. The link is in the bio. It's going to be super special, y'all. Super empowering uh, and things like that. If you ha- Also, if you haven't looked, haven't noticed already, the brand is available too. This is my brand right here, y'all. I love me. That's part of the brand. Go to the link in the bio. Check the brand out and whatnot. Um, Mic came off, <laughs> but anyways, y'all like and subscribe for more narcavengers.com/slash Toronto. See y'all there on November the 19th. Mental illness is out. Peace. <laughs>